Okay. We are live. Okay. Let's see. We have the... It's past number number five, I think. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Three, two, one. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Insecurity. On today's show, we want to talk about passwords and password requirements. We see all these funny links around with different types of password jokes, and you always get the constant notification of change your password or we need these requirements. So let's take 30 minutes and let's talk about this. Again, I'm joined by my favorite security person, Tom Webster. Howdy. And, and the sigh is for... So many different requirements, and what ends up happening when 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 a committee comes up with password requirements. So, Tom, you have anything to start off with? Well, I was thinking we could title the episode somewhere between two and sixteen characters, um, and we can use parentheses. We can't use underscores or dollar signs. You have to have a caret in it. It can't begin with a number, and it has to begin with a capital G and end in a lowercase g. So as long as we name the episode that, I think we should be okay. And again, I mean, it sounds weird, but you are exactly right. Every website tries to make their passwords more secure, but what they're doing is they're making people create one password and use that across all their sites. Right. Right. What people end up doing is they create something stupid and simple like Password 1 with a capital P and the number 1 at the end. And it satisfies the vast majority of what they're using because they just don't care. People just don't care about the password because, okay, it's got to fit these eight requirements and it can't be this long or this short. And I, I just – website operators don't understand that if – if you try to corral your users into a corner, they will push back with the uh, the force of God. Uh, you you will not force a user to create a secure password unless you just let them roam free. Um, and in banks that say here, you can use these six special characters, but if you go one character over our upper bound, we are going to throw away everything and empty your bank account. Or they just take it to the 16 characters and the rest of your 17 to 32 don't matter, right. which is what I love, which is amazingly hilarious when I see it. It makes me cry, but it happens. Yep. I mean, it's – it's. I'm in a unique situation. Uh, my father has my father runs a business where he has to log into different websites and the the and I didn't believe it until he showed me the number of different requirements each website requires and they have change your password every 30 days this one is every 60 days this one is 90 days this one like you said requires eight car between 8 and 12 capital and lowercase so he goes to me what should I do and this is where I, maybe we need to move the conversation to. I said, you have to create some sort of either algorithm or use a password manager or something. And that brought up a whole nother can of worms because now, now you have to explain to someone how to use a password manager or create an algorithm when they just want to log into their New York Times subscription or their email or something that doesn't really matter. Or just to play some Facebook game. And, and we have that problem. And... And the bigger sites are at least getting a little bit better about it. But for the most part, it's it's the funny part is they're not they're making you do all this, but the security on their back end is worse than just letting everyone uh, write password or monkey there. Exactly. Um, so you you see a lot where these companies will require insane, just totally different off the wall requirements for their passwords. Where this one can be, you know. 200 characters long if you want, but this one over here can't be any longer or any shorter than eight, and you have to stay within those bounds. It's It got to the point where before I started using a password manager, which we'll talk about a couple of my favorites here in a bit, um, I, I actually had tiers of passwords. So I had, you know, the, the crap tier of, okay, this is my stuff for services I don't really care about. I'm just logging in to get past the wall. 
Um, and then there's stuff that I sort of cared about, but not really, you know, kind of this is my online game password that I use once a month to jump into some game that I don't really care. Then there's stuff like, okay, here's Facebook and Twitter, here's my Gmail password, and then this one's for my encryption keys, and I only use it for encrypting things. Um, so I had, you know, five different passwords I reused all over the web. Um, which wasn't a bad system if any one of those got compromised, especially the lower key providers. It was inconvenient to change it, but it wasn't the end of the world. Um, but as we know, best security practice says, hey, you can't reuse passwords anywhere. And we've seen that with especially the recent LinkedIn breach, that if you reuse a password in places, your other services will get attacked. And we had that today with uh, Mac Rumors. Mac Rumors yep. just got hacked, and that's an, that's again. These websites get hacked, and their only responsibility is to the users of their website. They don't know what you do with it. But I was going to say that's actually what you said with the different levels. I do that, but you you explain to someone beforehand you got to use a different password for every website. And they go, how am I going to remember it? So then you have to come up with security for the, the regular person. Say, you know what? Create tiers. And by creating tiers, like you said, it does. it's not the best, but it keeps you sane. Yeah. It, at that point, you remember five different passwords, and you call it done. And, you know, I, I've got a whole lot of tiers. Most people aren't managing encryption volumes. Most people aren't, you know, managing giant accounts that they need to keep safe. There's really the, you know, the super secure one, the kind of secure one for Facebook and stuff. And then there's the crap tier that, you know, oh, no, it got hacked. I don't really care. You can take all my Farmville coins um, or whatever you're using your password for. So, you know, just remember three to five really good passwords, and we'll get into what a good password is, um, and it, it definitely helps keep people sane. Well, and so the other, with the tiers, and I, we're going to say that this is not the best practice, but it's the most rational mm -hmm. practice, is... It's a decent it, middle ground. Well, yeah, I mean, you have to, you, with these different tiers, the good part is if you have to tell someone, you know exactly where that goes to. If and you know that if they need to get into my, uh, my my bank information, they better have a damn good... I, I better be like held for ransom or something to the point that I know that they have access to this. But if they want to get into whatever else, there you go. You can give them your Facebook password for specifically this reason and then go back and quickly change it if that's what you need to do. But the other good thing is... And I'm, I just lost my train of thought. I just forgot it. It'll come back. It was a good thing too, but it's, I'm, I'm sure it'll get it back. We yeah. can uh, we can go into what makes a password good, um, and there's there's two main components to a good password. Um, the first is is kind of important, but it's not hugely hugely important when you take the second one into consideration. So the first thing is entropy, or the common word is randomness. Um, you know, if you type A, 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 that's got, like, no entropy. That's basically the same, it's literally the same character a whole bunch of times. Um, randomness is, you know, don't use a common dictionary word. Throw in some numbers where some letters would be. Throw in some random punctuation, like every second character hit a period. Something just to break up the monotony and just spice it up a little bit. Spice up your passwords. Um, but the second thing, and really the most important thing to having a good password, is length. And that's why a lot of sites, especially secure sites, recommend against passwords and recommend start going to passphrases. Start expanding that out into, you know, a couple words here or there, but don't use a lyric from a song. Uh, don't use a common... Bible verse, don't use something that would be straight out of a book because dictionary attacks are becoming book attacks. They're becoming multi-word sentence attacks, and that's one thing you have to keep an eye out for. But you know what the problem with your passphrase is? Where is your ampersand? Where is your number? Where is your first character must be in the first half of the alphabet? Right. And that's yeah. the bigger problem. It's it's They make the requirement that to, to stop the people from using the word password and they prevent the people that want to use a passphrase from using it because it doesn't meet the other requirements. Exactly. So it, 
There are edge cases to it, and not everything we say here will fit all cases, um, especially the banks that say, okay, it's got to be exactly 12 characters, and you have to start it with the capital of Egypt. It's just ridiculous, and honestly, I don't think we could ever fix that unless we fix them, um, which brings us probably to our next logical point is if I want to use a different password everywhere and I need to fit all these weird random requirements for all these different sites, my head isn't big enough to fit all that, what do I do? And, and yeah, you have to worry about all of them. The good part about that is that if a password gets compromised, you only have to change that. But with all the requirements, you need a way to do it. And I think the, I think we're both going to agree on you need some sort of password manager. And we're going to talk about the good ones. But we, I mean, but a password manager is as simple as writing it down and keeping it in a secure place. Don't do that, by the way. Evil Don't hacker. Don't keep it under your keyboard. Yeah, evil hacker people <laughs> like me. The first place I look is under the keyboard. The second place I look is the notebook inside your desk drawer. And trust me, they're in there. I'm in IT. It happens all the oh, time. Oh, of course. Of course it happens, but... If I want to know a password, just, oh, what? Huh? Uh, oh, yeah, there it is. Okay. Dog it's five. A, well, the, the point I was trying to make is that if, if, you're, if, if you're so... Uh, te if, if you're not... Basically, if you're going to have to write them down, write them down, but at least keep it hidden somewhere. Don't keep it on the keyboard or in the desk drawer or in or your in wallet. <laughs> Put it in your safe deposit box. Put it somewhere that, that's with your other secure papers. But Don't again, put it in passwords.doc on your desktop. That is a bad, bad idea. And don't encrypt it either with Excel because that's also easily hacked. Yes, yes. That is part of my job. It's, oh, God, somebody put a password on this before they threw a chair and ran out of the office. So let's talk about online password managers. <laughs> Do you want to um, start with us? Um, actually, I kind of wanted to start with, uh, wanted to start with the offline password manager, okay. um, the, the open source utility called KeyPassX, and that's K-E-E -E Pass X. Um, it's a wonderful application that you can actually keep on a thumb drive. Um, it's got encryption, it's got the security, and most of all, it's got the generator. It's got checkboxes that you can say, okay, it has to be this long, it has to contain these characters, it has to be pronounceable, it has to start with this capital of this odd country somewhere that I don't know. Um, and it would generate a random password for you for that site, keep track of the URL, username, password, uh, even a section if you want to say this is for finance stuff, this is for social media, this is for encryption, um, and then any notes you would have on that password. Like, okay, well, here's my security question and answer because you're not supposed to tell the truth on those. Anyone can find your mother's maiden name. That's not a secret. Um, so lie. Lie on your security questions and store the answers in your password manager. KeePassX makes it easy, and best of all, it's free. It's fantastically free. But another free one in my favorite password manager of all time is LastPass, by far, hands down. I just wanted to say, before we continue on to LastPass, I went to K-E-Y pass just to make sure that it went to the right spot because that's the other vector. You don't want to go to a security site and type it in wrong and then get, and then get a, a fake free version of their security software, which adds malware. So if you yes. do type key pass wrong, it does take you to the right site. My only K -E -E. problem with key K E E. My only problem with key pass, especially on the USB key, is I generally don't like to I don't carry any more USB keys, but some right. companies uh, disable the USB drive. From from whatever. So that's just be aware that if you're gonna go that route, you need to make sure you can access USB at all times. Or and find if the phone app. Isn't there a phone app? I think there is. Um, if you wanted to, another good thing is you can set a master password in KeePass, so you have to remember one password to log in to get all of your other passwords. Um, make sure to do that, but you can put it on something like Google Drive or Dropbox. You can just pull it down whenever you need and run the program right there. Again, some computers and some workplaces will have restrictions in place to stop that, but in my experience, it works for the majority of places. 
Okay, so let's go to a, my favorite as well, which is LastPass. I'll let you take it away. So LastPass is a place where you can just put your passwords, and they can stay in the cloud, safe, secure, forever. Um, and I, I know what you're thinking. So wait a minute, but if I logged into Chrome or Firefox and I just hit save, it just goes to this magical place and I don't have to see the passwords ever again. And Chrome even has a generator built in, so why on earth would I use LastPass? The answer is Google controls the keys to your castle unless you've set up the encryption passphrase, which most people don't do. Uh, but Google can decrypt the data you put into their services. So do you really trust Google? More importantly, do you trust all the people who are trying to attack Google and extract data to have your passwords? I sure don't. Um, so you need what's called a TNO service, a trust no one service. Um, the way LastPass works is you have your passwords, and they get encrypted on your computer. And then you send that encrypted blob of data that can't be recovered or gotten out with any kind of master key except the one you have in your head, and you send that to LastPass, and they just hold it for you. And then when you want a password, they ship you the blob back, you put in your password, and you decrypt it on your own computer, on the hardware you own. None of that happens on their servers. Make your changes, grab your passwords, package it all up, and send them the encrypted blob back. They can never get your passwords. And people who break into LastPass, they don't get anything except a bunch of random static. They will never get your passwords. It's the most secure password manager I've ever used. And with the Teresa, and it just got an update too, which actually makes it a lot prettier and a lot more user friendly. I mean, it was user friendly before, but it didn't have that that look about it. Right. And the other problem with the browser specific uh, things is that they are browser specific. If you're using Chrome here, yeah, you can use it on Chrome anywhere, but most computers that you run are not going to have Chrome. You're going to have to manually install it and then sync there. And then now when you sync, all that stuff now is on that public computer that you don't necessarily want. Same right. with Firefox. Uh, the other one that we I just want to touch on is the new Apple Keychain. Again, it has the big problem that you have to run iOS devices and the Mac and everything else to get it. But it's trying to be that one secure spot. And not to knock any of these. Look, if you're not going to use anything, at least use the built-in browser. If you're not going to do anything, it just, just be aware that it doesn't provide the security that something like LastPass does. And LastPass is everywhere. You can install it on your phone, on your tablet, in your browser. You don't even need to install it. You can access it via the website. And and they really make sure that the, if there's there if there's a keylogger, you can get a virtual keyboard. If there's a screen capture, it can it can scramble up the keys. They'll make sure that you're safe. And the good part is is that you're not tied to a specific software. You're tied to them, and they make it a point to be everywhere. Right. And we forgot to mention the best part about LastPass. LastPass is free. LastPass is totally free. You only pay $12 to get access to the mobile app to, and a couple cool sharing features. And, yeah, that's not, that's not 12 bucks a month. That's 12 bucks a year, $12. I spend more than that at McDonald's because I'm well, American. Yeah. Well, the hard part, and this goes back to when you created your passwords, and this was my train of thought that I lost. The hardest part of the passwords with all these requirements is accessing them on your phone. And yes. to put in this monstrous password on your phone and then forgetting is it a capital W or lowercase w and then having to do it again or, or one of those – it is just ridiculously hard. And LastPass makes it really easy. You just log in, and it'll see that, and you can launch it from there. It's their own browser, or you can copy the password, and you can paste it in. It's utterly fantastic. It's honestly, LastPass It should be the poster child for how to design a security-aware, secure, trust-no-one application. This is the golden standard. And you need to do it. There's... If you're concerned at all about security, you need LastPass. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. You need LastPass. Well, let's go back to, we. so we got that. And again, 
if you want to set up LastPass, just very simply, or KeePass, download it. The instructions are fairly simple. Uh, LastPass, I think, is more shiny, as Tom likes to call it, than, mm -hmm. than the others. Both of them work well, but again, we recommend LastPass because I, I think it passes the grandmother test. My, my father has it. And he hates passwords. In fact, I'll leave the, the the best password management system goes to him in a second. But he was able to figure it out. And when I talk about the best password management system, he's just, it's very easy. He forgets all his passwords just every <laughs> single time. And it changes his password every single day. And it emails him and he gets it. That may be the best password management system. I don't recommend <laughs> it, but but... I'm just saying he's not all entirely wrong. But again, going back to the length, if you wanted to do that, let's find that you want to create this long thing. And when you go to entropy and you talk about length, you want it to, you want something really long. And like you said, you don't want something in the uh, in a book or a lyric. But again, you still were you still have to enter it in, and that's going to be the hard part. Right, right, and it's especially difficult to enter in that super long passphrase on a mobile device. Um, that's why we recommend a password manager, because you can just copy, paste, done, instead of having to type in your 64-character password. All of mine are 32-character randomized strings, and I've had to type those in a couple times. It's not exactly fun. Well, the good part is, is that when someone asks you for your password, you absolutely have no idea what it is. <laughs> I have no idea what any of my passwords are. I know my last password, my one password to get into LastPass, and that's it. Oh, and on top of that, we should probably mention that they've got uh, two-factor authentication. So you have to have my password, my username, and this. And the good part is, there's your plausible deniability. I mean, sort of. Someone says, what's yeah. your Gmail password? Here it is. Well, now they have to enter your, your two-factor. And hopefully yeah. by that point, you wipe your phone. Yeah. And then now they don't have it. And Well, you wanted my password. You never said anything about the two-factor. And the good part with LastPass is that is free as well. And yes. it works. And, and it works well. And... And if you and you can put it on as many devices as you want, which is again another security vector. But if you if you change phones a lot, you may want to have it on multiple devices just in case. And you can print out just in case you don't have your phone your ten one-time passwords. Mm -hmm. But I really do like the password sharing. So so the one feature LastPass has is password sharing. If we have the same site that we log in, let's say my wife and I have we only have one Mint account, she needs my password. So instead of her memorizing the same thing, she has a LastPass account, I have a LastPass account, we just put it, we share it, and if one of us changes it, yeah, because I pay for premium, that's a premium feature, if one changes it, it just saves automatically. And if I want to revoke access, I, it's just one click away, and it saves it there, and, and it's great. So, look, we, again, we, we can't recommend it enough. Yeah, it's if you're looking for the mom and pop solution, if you're looking for something for your grandmother because she keeps complaining about how KeyBank is screwing up her password, I've got experience in that. <laughs> um, get her last pass. Seriously, it saved me a whole lot of phone calls. And the last no. thing, the, no, the last thing I want to talk about. <laughs> oh, you're right. Uh, you just you just click the. No, it's the forgot. Yeah, yeah, right under the. Damn it. Last okay. The, the last thing I the last thing I want to talk about is if you see a website that has all these weird requirements that you don't think are positive, I think it's we need to start sending them letters. I, I think it's really important to call up or to send a letter or to find a way to tell them, hey, you're not comfortable with the security. Because one of the things I realized recently is I wanted to go to a password uh, to put to copy and paste my password, and I got you can't paste this password. And I go, that's annoying. LastPass won't work on this. I now have to type this out. So now my security is just getting past the barrier that I can't paste. So I sent them a letter. I mean, you, you're probably not going to get a response. But if everyone sends them a letter saying something simple like, this makes no sense, this is not secure, people are going to reduce to the lowest security, they may start listening. Yeah. And it's important to, if all of us do it, if all of us become more vigilant, they're going to start listening to what people want. I mean, Facebook put two-factor because of Fire Sheep. Twitter did it after the AP got hacked, and they actually have a really nifty two-factor uh, implementation. It's, it's People are learning. We need to start worrying about security. So by calling them, they have, they have more incentive to do so. 
Right. And trust me, I I was a firm believer in yeah, look, I can I can email them all day long. I can call them all day long and tell them that their security sucks. Nothing will ever change until I did it to T-Mobile. They were actually storing the passwords in their database. They weren't encrypting them. They weren't doing anything to protect them. Anyone could just walk into that database, grab my password, and use it to log into my account if they wanted to. Um, and so I emailed them about it and said, hey, you guys are storing this in plain text. It's bad. You should do this and this and this. Sent up a couple of links, some information, and they said, okay, we'll send it off to the web dev team for, for analysis. And I said, oh, okay, yeah, sure, whatever. Two weeks later, I get an email back, hey, thanks for your suggestion. We just implemented all of it. It should be good now. I just recently tested their security. It's good. It's, it's way better than what they were doing before. They implemented the fixes I suggested. It, it can only take that one time. So it is worth it. And remember, and I, I want to probably leave on this. Remember, security is something that costs a lot of money that doesn't get us anywhere. It's not a feature that most people care about. It just costs more money to have another database with salt and to encrypt and everything. The CEO wants to show and sh to show the shareholders that they're making money and to say, "Oh, now we got to revamp our security and hashing algorithms." That does. That's not a feature people care about, unless unless it happens and it's too late and you get hacked and now you lose the trust of everyone. Right. right. Security is an expense until it's a requirement. And you never, ever want to be in that position. You never want to be in the position of, yeah, I really wish we would have spent more money or time securing our stuff. That's a really bad position to be in. People get fired for that. Well, fired and then sued and then everything else. Okay, yeah. we're just about out of time, so... So any last words on passwords? Oh, no. There's a lot of no. last words, but... Yes. yes. Be don't secure. Don't use monkey, don't use password, don't use dance, don't use 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Or your name, or the city you live in, or your zip code, or anything that most people can figure out very quickly. Don't use your dog's name. So, okay, I'm done. Let's say goodnight. Well, see you guys. Until next time. Have a good night. Bye.